And good evening and welcome to the most electrifying show in sports entertainment, the Jackson Christian Eagles show. We have all kinds of special guests tonight. We got players, we got coaches, we got food right <laughs> here at Hub City Deli. You need to get down here and do it. They've done it again. They've got the angry pig. Get down here and see if that's a feature sandwich and it'll go away. So if you don't get down here, not tonight, you can come tonight and get it. Come tomorrow, next day. They disappear because the Piggy Sue was the featured sandwich the last time we were here. Of course, always, our head coach, Darby Palmer, is here. And, of course, my sidekick also in basketball, Coach Brian Bullard, is here. Now, we got Coach Wyatt coming in a little bit later and after they get going. And, man, we got some great stats from our last game. And then, of course, we've got two outstanding guests coming in. But I'm going to keep you in a little suspense for a minute and make you guess. And they are special people. And they're football players, but they're not at the varsity yet. But to be honest with you, they might could fill out and play just well as some of those freshmen play. And we got good freshmen, our freshman team. Ooh-wee, and they've done a lot of good junior varsity. Gentlemen, glad to see you. Brian, Darby, I'll let you all open up with what you all want to talk about. I've got some questions fed to me by the Jackson Christian fans. Coach, we, uh, we're excited to be back um, at Hub City after taking a, a week off for fall break and getting some – much needed rest and, and a little bit of practice, but also some time off there. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll go back a couple of weeks there to, to Tipton and to homecoming. And at first, we want to hit on homecoming um, and the crowd we had, the activities the whole week, the, um, all the different activities that were taking place at the game with the, the coronation. And it's just a really good night of, of football um, along with school uh, spirit stuff and, and Coach Palmer. Picked up a 56 to seven win over Tipton, and, and talk about some some of the positive things that that you saw from that game. Absolutely, always hitting on homecoming week and what that week means. There's always distractions throughout the school day and throughout the week, but our guys did a great job um, handling their maturity in a positive way um, and getting ready to play the game. And they did a great job executing throughout the game uh, on on little things, all three phases of the game. And I couldn't be more proud of them. So we started off um, quickly, again, offensively. And, and Coach, we can um, hit on a, a few stats. And, and you, you had a thought, Coach. Go ahead. Well, uh, no, uh, the thought I was uh, going to say is what a great game and how we executed and little things we looked in. But we had some great stats for, yeah. uh, for you two guys to talk with. And, and fans, you need to listen to these. We've got some outstanding young men. And I'll say this for the backs and the ends and the quarterbacks, they will give that great offensive line. And the last time we were here, three of those young men were on this show. What a line. We did the job the other night. Oh, absolutely. And, and, you know, Cam stats and, and Jalen stats and, and all of our running backs and our, really our whole offense executed at a high level. When you have a running back in Cam Boyd that, that touched the ball six times and had 138 yards and four touchdowns, that's a pretty effective night uh, with what we were doing. And he moved into second all time with, in career rushing yards. and. Uh, he needs 152 to pass uh, Adam Reagan for number one, and I think that's very accomplishable, and especially with three games left in the regular season. Plus correct me if I'm wrong, gentlemen. Didn't Adam Reagan play over at Lambeth University? I believe, I believe he, so. I believe yes, he sir. played for uh, Coach Wallace over there. Rick I Wallace. believe he did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And along with Cam, uh, Jay, I believe his first touch of the night uh, went for a touchdown. Two rushes, 61 yards, and two touchdowns. Uh, four receptions for 57 yards and a 38-yard kick return, which a little bit surprised they kicked to him. But uh, we, we, always, we always like watching him return kicks and 156 uh, all-purpose yards um, on the night. And then and we can't forget about Elijah. Elijah's emerging um, as a, a guy that can – all three of these guys, if they touch the ball, there's a chance they can go. And, and our line's doing a great job. And Elijah, three rushes, 62 yards and a touchdown. And – um, I mean, he, he's just getting better and better every week. And it's really nice to – and, Coach Palmer, you can hit on this. It, it's nice, isn't it, to be able to, when Cam needs a break, to, to insert Elijah there in the lineup. Oh, absolutely. And, and the best part is they cheer for one another and they support one another. And, that, and that's what you want to see as a coach. When you're, you're bringing in a, a one-two punch like they are, um, they want each other to succeed. Well, I've seen Elijah get go up after a touchdown run or a long run. Cam has thrown what I call run-through blocks, mm -hmm. great ones. I mean, he not only gets some completely out of the way, he goes down to get another man. And guess what? It's caught on. And Elijah is doing the same mm -hmm. thing for Cam. He's going to get 
a man and then maybe an extra man. Well, absolutely. And the, the first score that we had with Jay, the first play of the game, that it was set up a lot of times by our receivers came them in, but Cam's block, I think he took out two guys. He did. And was able to spring Jalen. So and we can remember job. time. This is actually a compliment, Cam, if you're listening. We can remember a time when Cam couldn't block that well. Now, he has improved each year. Now he's deadly. I don't want him blocking me. <laughs> That's right. It, it, and Cam's improved, and it's a testament to him and how hard he works and how hard he trains. He's improved in every facet of his game, and he's matured, and he's a great leader for us. Yeah, a lot of schools talk. Well, there's some I know of talking to him. Looking at him, that time will come later. Cam Boyd is focused totally on football. Just talk to him, and you'll see. That's right. So, defensively, um, what did you see from on the defensive side of the ball? Obviously, giving up seven points, and that touchdown came uh, fairly late in the game. Um, what, did, what did you see from our defense that you were proud of? Well, absolutely. And, and you always we want to watch on film and see how everybody pursues the ball. And that's one thing this year with our defense, defensive linemen to secondary, how they pursue the ball as a unit and chase after the ball. Um, a lot about defense is alignment and assignment, but then it comes into heart and pursuit. Uh, really enjoyed watching them attack the ball, go after the ball. Um, I believe our box is getting better. We, we, we start um, two sophomores in the middle. They're going to make mistakes at times, but each game they're getting better and better and better. Uh, and I love seeing those guys succeed and make plays. And, and with, with that, builds more confidence in what they do. Big Cedric's pretty well jammed the middle up, hasn't he? He, he has. I he love that a, young man today. Yeah. And he hustles, folks. He gives you every pl- thing he's got on every play. And yeah, somebody said, well, I see him come out of the game. Well, as hard as he's <laughs> hustling, everybody in uh, college football, they rotate two lines in yeah. and out. And, right. and good job by him. You're, you're right. I think the defense has improved immensely. We're locking up even better than we were. And a lot of positives. Yeah, and especially high school football, um, it's hard when your defense – is on the field as much as they were this past game. This past game they had 71 snaps of total of defense, defensive snaps. Offensively, we did a great job executing, but we had one or two or three play drives, um, and we only had 21 plays total on offense. To execute like we are and to score 56 points in 21 plays, that's a really good job on both sides of the ball, especially holding them to seven with 71 snaps defensively. Yeah, absolutely. Brian, and you brag on your group that you coach. You, he is so much. He loves them. <laughs> Off air, he guys. He says a lot of good things. But say some good things on them. Well, uh, I do. I will brag on on the two uh, our two outside guys, Caleb and and Chilton, had a, a really good night, and they're getting better and better, understanding what we're trying to get them to do um, within our scheme. And it's a, not a glamorous position. A lot of times, defensive linemen, they, defensive ends, they think pass rush and get up the field and get after the quarterback. In reality, we want our guys to, to set the edge and solidify that gap, and and they're getting better at it. And Caleb, I think, had a sack. Um, I think he had a sack that um, – it's hard to remember two weeks ago, but um, he's getting better. And then, you know, we were able to get some young guys in there. Tristan was able to get some snaps, and uh, Gavin Walker played a little bit, and I'm excited about those young guys. And they work hard every day along with our, our uh, three technique, our nose guard with – um, obviously, Joey and Cedric, but you also Kyle. Um, we we would be a little bit of a bond without Kyle this year, uh, backing up our at our three tech. Um, he's done a great job, and then Hunter Waldrop at the nose, and so those guys just continue to get better. Um, and and we're I, I love coaching those guys with Coach Gillum, and he does a great job with our interior linemen as well. They are fun people. I know you, Darby. Anything else we need the fans to know before we go in our break? We got about a minute and a half to take our first break here at Hub City Deli. No, I mean, with, with our bye week, we did a great job getting back to the fundamentals of what we do, both offensively, defensively, and on special teams, and, and adding a few more concepts that we're going to hopefully get to show uh, this Friday. And we're excited about the last three games of our regular season and our playoff push that we're about to be on. Before, before we go to this first break, and I'll touch on it a little bit later, but we're going to get you out of here after this one. But Give us some challenges that FACS is going to present for us um, defensively and offensively. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, defensively, they're, they're going to look to cause chaos with things that they do with their alignment and different assignments that they try to give you. Uh, they're going to be in a 3-3 look at times. They may jump into a 5-2 look and try to pin people in off the edge. So we need to do a good job with our communication up front, especially with how we block and how we do things to handle that offensively. They do a great job getting the ball to one and 13 out on the edge, taking shots, jump balls to them. Uh, 
secondary wise, we have to be constant communication with our coverage and checks that we have um, and come up and tackle and, and get those guys in long yardage situations. Defensively, you always want to win on first down to force that offense's hand to be in long yardage situations on second and third. And we need to do a good job on first downs on Friday night. Absolutely. Hey, don't touch that dial. We've got more interviews, and they are electric, exciting. You can't beat the Jackson Eagle Show. We'll be back from Hub City Deli after these important messages. Hub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's brisket hoagie with brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. And we are back at the most electrifying show in sports entertainment. If you don't listen to the Jackson Christian Eagle show, you are missing a treat. We have got a fabulous guy. I'm going to let Coach give the hold, but Coach White has done such a good job. I saw all but one of his middle school games, and I saw our kids were here at the start of the season. They way down the field from there. Coach Bullard, take it away. Coach White, um you were on, I think, earlier in the of the year, um, talking and, and previewing your middle school guys. And um, obviously, this is Coach Watts, our middle school head coach, along with a varsity assistant. He does our secondary and uh, coaches receivers and up in the box for us, does a great job. Um, let's talk about your expectations and, and your thoughts when that first time we talked and, and kind of how – this season progressed. We knew losing a, a really good eighth grade group that we were going to have some uh, some struggles, some growing pains, and, and talk about that a little bit. Some strengths that you saw, some growth maybe from our team. Yeah, absolutely. We uh, that was kind of the the expectation, you know, at the beginning of the season or preseason, and um, we uh, we did we had some some things that we had to to work through as far as. Uh, personnel and as far as losing some some players especially a, a very very talented eighth grade class which from what I've been told it happened several years we'd gone several years having a very very talented eighth grade class and then numbers just kind of just kind of fell down a little bit but and so we knew from the beginning it was going to be a, a very big teaching year and uh, just really trying to stay positive with those guys and, and just keep them engaged for the whole season and and just getting better every day and that was that was the biggest focus for us this year was uh getting better every day and that like coach joe said that's that's one of the things that i think you could really see um was their progress throughout the year in becoming uh better football players and, and better teammates and uh understanding the importance of knowing their own role and how they can make their teammates better yeah. so so we're all competitors you're a competitor and you want to win every time that that we step out on the field. And, and I believe there was one game uh, kind of out of reach for us, but the rest of our games, we're right there. One score, maybe two scores here and there, even a couple two-point conversions away from, from tying a game or even winning a game. So what, what is your message? Because um, sometimes that, that's, that's really hard for, for coaches to stay positive. So what, what was your message to continue to – preach to those guys to where the the end of the year they put it together in that Tipton Rosemark game. Well, for us it was, you know, except for that first game where, you know, we just looked like we had no business being on the field that night, but um from coaches and players, but um for the rest of the season the big thing was just just compete and just being in there in the fourth quarter and being in a position where the game is still in hand and there's an opportunity to possibly get a stop and get a score and go ahead. Um that's the message and and that's uh, thankfully, that's what those guys did every week. Um, they they were right there in the fourth quarter, yeah. and um, and like you said, that's really when you can do that consistently. It's just now figuring out a way to finish ball games, and that was it. Took seven, you know seven ball games to do it, but on that last one, they they figured it out. They figured out how to finish a ball game, and that was that was really special to watch and be a part of. And one of my favorite nights is are those Thursday night home games. And, and we'll talk to a couple of these guys here in a little bit, but seeing guys 
literally leaving everything on the field, cramping up, getting banged up, just continue to get hit and beat up by bigger kids and just go to the sideline for a minute and then come back in. Talk about the heart and, and kind of the determination of a lot of those guys. And a lot of guys playing, never coming off the field, offense, defense, special teams, there they were irons, there were some iron men out there. Absolutely. I mean that's that's you couldn't say it any better for the two guys that are gonna be on the show tonight. Um, I remember last year as a seventh grader, Kingston um, I think it was our last game of the season, and Kingston was a seventh grader. And he's, I mean, he's an undersized guy, very talented football player, but he's undersized and uh, does well with that. But I remember looking over at the sideline, we were sending the offense in and looking over at him like he's running into the game. And I have to stop him because I look and he's, you know, like, like blood coming out of his nose. <laughs> and I'm like I have to stop him from going on the field. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa Kingston, you yeah. know, hold on. But, but that, and, and, and Hudson the same way, he's on the show tonight as well, and um, just the heart that he showed defensively, offensively, every single play he's going to show up and do something. And that um, – I, I couldn't have been more proud. And that's why it's, it was so easy to be positive because I see those guys um, every single week just pouring everything out that they have on the field. And, you know, I tell them mistakes are going to happen, but, you know, this, the, the effort you can't coach, you can't teach. And, and that's, that's the biggest thing that they had to, to – to bring themselves, and, and they did. So, similar to senior graduating, you know, eighth graders, they, they move up to high school, which they're not leaving you because you, you'll still be around with them and, and get to coach them. Talk about those eighth grade guys. Um, talk about that group and, and maybe just mention something briefly uh, about them and, and how much you um, – your relationship or, or just anything positive that you can think of with, with those, those eighth graders. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and that's, you know, it, it was – it was a really uh, – it was a special year um, just to be able to, to develop a relationship with those guys, uh, having them last year as seventh graders. And then um, – and, and we had a few – in fact, uh, Hudson and Kingston might have been two of, the, two of the only ones that really contributed a lot last year as seventh graders. And so with, with that little experience coming into this year, it was, uh, it was really special just being able to watch them grow and develop relationships with those guys and see – them under the the coaching even even of coach Lumley and coach Ray just to see them develop those relationships as well and and uh, you know we've we've got some we we started several seventh graders on the line but those eighth graders that uh that played offensive line and defensive line for us they they really had to find out this year what it means to I mean get your hands dirty and what it really means to to be tough nosed and uh and seeing them do that was uh, was really special. Yeah. Uh, so, looking looking forward, um, looking ahead, what what do you see? And we got a couple minutes left. What do you what do you see for for this team um, next year? What what do you think? Some strengths, where some some questions maybe hit a little bit on on next year's squad and what you're looking forward to. Well, I, I think we uh, we're at an advantage going into next year. Uh, as far as we've got a lot of seventh graders that had to do a lot of contributing this year. And so we've already got a little experience. We can get those nerves out of the way. We've already got a little experience. We're not starting at, you know, the ground floor with a lot of those guys. And um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what that group can do uh, as they get older. And uh, got to watch a little bit of the elementary games as well, you know, the fifth and sixth graders and, and knowing what they have coming forward too. I'm, I'm really looking forward to the future. And, um, and, and also just as a head coach and even as a play caller often, I've been coaching defense for a long time in yeah. high school, but now being an offensive play caller, just kind of growing into that role and uh, understanding what we want to do as a program and how we want to introduce those kids to our concepts in high school um, and how we can run that at that middle school level. That's, uh, that's something that, that I, I look forward to growing into with them and, uh, and, and just seeing them live that out. Yeah, and, and you mentioned those, that elementary team, the sixth grade guys coming up, pretty solid group, and they had a great year. And, Coach, we'll, we'll have them on next week. We'll have yeah, two of their coaches. Um, so we're, we're going to showcase fun, those guys. That's a fun group, too. Yeah, and we're excited about that. Coach, tell us, uh, we got one minute left. Talk a little bit about your staff and then, and then finish up with uh, just some, some words you have for our middle school uh, football program. I tell you what, Coach uh, Coach Ray is like a right hand man. He is a guy that anything that needs to get done, he thinks about it before I even ask him to do it. He is right there, just taking care of all of those things, um, and he is he's great uh, just to be able to lean on when it comes to play calling, offensive play calling. 
um, as, as I'm the one calling the plays, but, you know, with the call sheet and all of that and just try to find the plays on the bands for the kids to, you know, he already knows what play I'm going to call, and he's telling me what color and what number it is. And while we're on the sideline, he's, he's just a great – Almost like we share a brain, but, you know, probably together combined, we, we probably amount to one brain. <laughs> so, um, And then you've got Coach Lumley, who is uh, – I'm talking about years and years and years of experience coaching uh, football and baseball. And, uh, man, I, I talk to those guys so much about how they have no idea the privilege uh, that, that they have, that they're experiencing just to be under a guy who's coached that many years and is doing it now because he just loves the game yeah. and loves to work with these kids and – um, and then you can't forget Greg Armour. That's right. Greg Armour travels with us. Greg Armour helps us with laundry, films games for us. I mean, Greg Armour does – it gets the water ready for us and the footballs and get them put on the field. Um, it's a great staff. I'm, I'm really blessed. They, they make me look good in a lot of ways. Coach, thank you uh, for coming on tonight and, and giving some time. And thank you for what you do for our middle school program and those guys you mentioned. And, Exciting times ahead for that, that program and excited to see those young linemen coming up and uh, what, what the product that we can put on the field next year. Yes, and I sir. want to thank Coach, too, because not only does he teach the proper way to play football and improves these young men, he teaches them character and improves them. You know, football coaching is a little bit of like what God and Jesus wants out of all of us. They want us to improve as Christians, and this man does that type of work and uh, the score is not important. Fans, we won some games. We lost some games. The more important thing is to improve and build relationships. That's what he did. Coach, thank you for thank what you. you do. I appreciate it. We're about to take a time out. The Beckham asked for it. It's not on the board tonight, <laughs> but there is a sandwich called the Beckham. You want that brisket and pimento cheese stuff, and it is a wonderful sandwich at Hub City Deli. What we're going to do. You've got time to call five friends because we got some exciting young men coming up. Call five people right now and tell them to tune in to the Jackson Christian Eagle Show. We're going to take that time out here at Hub City Deli. Hub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's Brisket Hoagie with Brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. And you're back on the Jackson Eagles show, and this place is fixing to light up. Mr. Excitement is self, <laughs> and I'm going to let Coach introduce him. I know who he is. His first name starts with a K, but before I go, I want to do something for Hub City Deli. You see what I got, fans? It was a tough choice. I like cookies. It keeps my blood sugar down, but there's some lemon icebox pie up there. They got more than just sandwich. Great sandwiches, and they, we appreciate them here on the Jackson Christian Eagle Show. And now, I'm going to give it to Brian Bullard to introduce Mr. Excitement himself. Coach, I appreciate it, and, and I second that about Hub City, and we're excited to be here again. Um, got Kingston Robinson with us tonight, um, eighth grader, plays running back, plays receiver, plays uh, corner, uh, does a little bit of everything, probably had a lineup at quarterback uh, sometime this year, um, and, and we're excited for uh, Kingston to, to be on the show with us tonight. I, I've had him in class and uh, being around, around him in the building. Um, he's, a, he's a quiet kid, um, but – that smile will light up a room, and, and we're excited to have him on the show with us tonight. We are, and I want to say something, Kingston. I enjoyed I came to most of the middle school games. I missed, missed one because I believe we played here on a Tuesday night, and I yeah. had to miss that one. You guys improved steadily through the year. But now you got a little electricity. Anybody measured your 40 time, how fast you are? Because he can burn. Absolutely. Absolutely. How fast are you? Uh, I haven't really did. I haven't did my 40 dot. 40 in two years, but the last time I did it was I ran a 4-9 two years ago, so I haven't I haven't did it since then, though. Folks, I couldn't roll a 4-9, <laughs> and there are backs that in the NFL that actually run 4-8s and 4-9s. Yeah. You say, well, wait a minute, Coach, all of them run 4-3s and 4 No, they don't. Uh, the fullback type, this young man is going to be more than a fullback, and he's not only fast, he's going to get faster. Yes, sir. Kingston. 
Um, talk about all the different um, positions that that you lined up in this year offensively and the motion and uh, the, the different things that you bring uh, to the offense. Um, I played running back this year. Uh, how running back was we – we wanted to get to the outside this year. So when we did run, most of the run plays we did, they were trying to get outside. They were trying to get to the outside zone and go off of that. So what do you think um, as a running back, what are, what are your biggest strengths? What do you, what does Kingston Robinson uh, bring to the table? Uh, I think my biggest strengths are being in the open field and seeing grass, being around grass, being in the open field. If there's one guy on me, I'm pretty sure I can make a miss. Yeah. You can. Uh, what do you think, or you just do it naturally? Some people have the jump, side jump step move. Some have more movement in their hips than a hula girl. What do you do best to fake people out of their uniform? Because I saw him make a guy leave his uniform on the field <laughs> after he faked him out one night. Uh, I like leading one way, then doing a hard cut, hard going the cut. other way. That is great. I've got to ask you this. If Coach Bullard – told you that if you want to really play, get some varsity time, what position would it be when you move up with the older guys? Uh, it would be running back. Yeah. So, Kingston, I, I'm, you, I'm not ever going to call somebody small, okay, but undersized. Undersized is probably the, the term for you. What, what is that that gives you the motivation to, to go out against? And, and we played some big teams this year. Um, in middle school, what and you just keep that first guy's not going to bring you down most of the time. What do you attribute that to? Is this heart? What What is that from a guy that that is a little bit undersized being out there competing against guys bigger than him? Uh, I think it's working harder than others and wanting to get past them and still try to move your feet even if they have you wrapped up. Yeah. So at, let's talk about your team. Mm-hmm. You know, we there was we started off slow. Then there were some close games. There were some some heartbreaking, you know, two-point losses here and there, and we tied it together there at the end. But but how talk about that stretch there, and how did you, as an eighth grader, as a leader, uh, keep your team motivated through those times? I tried to keep them motivated by keeping them, like, telling them to keep their head up. Because just because we lost, it's not like we, it's not like we played bad. That's not like we played super bad or did anything wrong. We just lost it at the end. Yeah. And, and t- sometimes we talk about the oh, scoreboard doesn't always losses, tell the story. Yeah. That's it, right. It didn't tell the story. Uh, and, and, again, folks, we won ball game. Don't, uh, if people out there, if you're worried about that, get over <laughs> These guys are winners. And, and if they weren't winners, they would have folded like a cheap accordion mm-hmm. during the season, and they never folded. Coach, I got two, and we'll have some more time. Go Can ahead. I ask him a couple of up-close and personal questions, just like the big guys have to answer. Did a college game the other night, and we did some interviews, and they have to answer these questions. What's your favorite Bible verse? My Bible, favorite Bible verse is John 3.16. And that is a great one to have. Now, what about food, both out in the public but at school? I like to hear about those school lunches. You all have some dandy lunches. I just don't get invited to eat the lunches. <laughs> um, my favorite school lunch is probably it has to be the ham and cheese sliders. You know, I've heard that from some of the yeah. old, older boys say that That's too. Right. And uh, What about uh teachers and subjects and it can be one teacher and a different subject or same subject for that teacher um, my favorite teacher it would probably be miss lane okay and what subject uh, any subject what do you like the best besides besides physical education because this man is physical mm-hmm. um math i would i like math the best Math, uh-oh. Man, we got a bunch of math scholars at Jackson Christian. That's right. I bet your class is one of the top math classes in the whole school, even taking the older folks. <laughs> you see, he, he, this young man is very humble. And play. What about sports? Do you play any other sport, or are you just a uh, football man? I play football, and I also play soccer. Wow. Have you ever thought about, you know, Zach Sisko is going to graduate. <laughs> Have you ever thought about – Becoming an extra point and field goal man. Also, in addition to running, the great Paul Horning, Hall of Famer, uh, was a running back and kick field goals. Would you like to do that? It wouldn't be my best thing, but I would always try to be, I would try to get better. And, and be I was kind of aiming at that for you. This young man just told you how he really is. He will do anything that's good for the team. And if we ask him to be a field goal and extra point man, I think you could do it. I've seen the old leg uh, whip around there in soccer and kick at a ball, and I think you got a, a shot at it. One more question for me, and I know Brian has probably got a couple more 
But um, what play this year, whether it's yours or one of your teammates, really stood out to you in the middle school games? My favorite play was probably against Humboldt when we we ran a pass. It was before halftime, and it was flood right, and it, it was a pass play. The first time to play, it was going to the X, but the corner came down to the X, and I was the outside receiver running the go. So the coach told me to run the go, and he told the quarterback to throw it to me on the go, and I scored on that next play. Coach, this man knows his terminology Breaking and everything. Down. That's right. I'm going to throw it back to you because he has totally <laughs> impressed me. Just keep on running as fast as you can and don't let him catch you. Kingston, so we're, you're moving on, uh, moving up, I should say, um, to varsity football uh, next year at Jackson Christian. And what are, what are you excited about um, being a part, going into your freshman year and being a part of the varsity football program? Uh, I'm excited about being playing for a bigger team, like with a lot of players on the team, because I'm not really used to that. So speaking of that, this year – um, didn't have a lot of numbers, um, and, and there were some games uh, where you you were obviously cramping, you were obviously um, in pain, and, and you didn't want to come off the field. And um, you and your teammates battled and were very fun to watch. And uh, we're excited uh, for, for Kingston to come up and, and to see what – see him get bigger, see him get in the weight room, uh, develop his body and, and what he can do for Jackson Christian. Absolutely. Thank you. Kingston, you can say anything you want to to the listenership, the viewership, Jackson Christian fans, non-Jackson Christian fans, it's your turn. Go Eagles. There go you Eagles. go. Now, you can't beat that. That is a solid sound statement. I'm proud I got to meet it because all I've seen is the number and the helmet on him. This is an articulate young Great man. Great kid. He will talk to you if you need to, but he's got bigger things. He's going to get Coach Irv's weight program. He's going to work on that football, and he's going to make you and me and everybody else, the, uh, fans of Jackson Christian, proud of him. And, and Kingston, thank you for being with us tonight. You're welcome. He is, see, manners, he, he's got it all. <laughs> Full coverage back. We're fixing to take a timeout, and while we take that timeout, fans, I'm going to bite into this, but their sandwiches – are great here too. I'm taking mine home with me tonight because I can't eat before broadcast. You're on the Jackson Christian Eagles show and we're going to take a time out from Hub City Deli. Hub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's brisket hoagie with brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. We are back. The electricity is flowing. We've had a full house tonight. Great coaches, great players, and Coach Man, his name starts with H, and someday he may just say, I'm, I am HL, because he's <laughs> going to be that famous one day. I'm going to let you take care of the interview for one of our other fine middle school players. Coach, Kingston did a tremendous job, and um, we're trying to get Hudson to go first, and, and Kingston jumped up there and beat him to the, the punch, but we got Hudson Little with us uh, tonight, and along with Kingston, um, Hudson played a, a little bit of everything, um, some running back, some receiver, um, probably, I think, had to take some quarterback snaps there for a little while and played linebacker on defense and was just a guy that um, was all over the field uh, making tackles, running the football, um, and, and he got better every game and was another one of those guys that we talked about with this team that just left it all out on the field. There were, I remember games where he's cramping up because he's going both ways and I think kicking as well. Um, and so Hudson Little's with us. And Hudson, we're welcome to. I'm just going to throw one question at you. And uh, are you ready to go to the varsity? Yes, sir. Okay, and it's Coach Bull turn. He's got several good technical questions. And I threw a surprise one, didn't mean to. And you know what, Kingston handled the surprise technical question quite well. I know you're going to do the same thing. Hudson, we, we've talked about, and, and you were part of it, so you're, you're well aware of it, the, the ups and downs of this year. Started off uh, kind of on a, on a bad note there to begin the year, but each game got better and better. Came on the, the short end of a few uh, games there on the scoreboard and were able to put it, um, put it together there at the end. And, 
And talk about this year. What, what was something that, that you really um, learned from it, from maybe, maybe coming up short there uh, a few times? Well, like you said, we faced a lot of adversity early in the year. And it just taught us to get back at practice and work hard, and we eventually figured it out at the end of the year. So I asked Kingston this question, and as an eighth grader, and as I know you're, you're somebody that these, these guys look up to, what was your message um, to your teammates? And sometimes, and, and you know this well, sometimes when things go bad, teams can, can pull apart. And, and y'all, y'all seem to kind of hold it together there. And, and there's always stuff that goes on. Um, but what was your message to your teammates? Well, um, just to stick together. We, it's a hard path, football season. Football's hard, and we just stayed together, and we, we knew that it'd come together and we'd get a win and start playing a lot better. And we had great coaches that helped us through that. Absolutely. And, and so what's your favorite? And these are more Coach Joe questions, but I'm, I'm, I take this one. I know he, I don't think he'll ask this one. You, you play a lot, of, a lot of offense. You play a lot of defense. Uh, you kick. So out of those three, what, what is your favorite um, part of football? I'd have to say offense is probably my favorite. And, and why is that? I just like to – everybody likes to score, but I like to see my impact on the scoreboard. Yeah. But talk about your – you know, last year you and Kingston and, and just a, maybe a handful of seventh graders probably uh, contributed on that team with a lot of really good eighth graders, really solid eighth graders. Talk about your line um, this year. I think four out of the five were seventh grade, maybe three out of the five were seventh grade. Did you see progress from those guys, and, and what did you uh, – how did y'all come together there offensively? Uh, definitely. Um, it was a struggle at the beginning of the year. We had some, some breakdowns and some miscues, but Coach Lumley is a great lineman coach, and we definitely figured it out, and they looked really good at the end of the year, and they're going to be great next year. Absolutely, and those guys are, are big guys and going to get physical and strong, and I think they're going to do some big things there with some good skill guys coming up too from the sixth grade. Um, Coach, what do you got for Hudson? Oh, I got a couple of things. Most of them are up close and personal questions, but first one, a very important question. What's your favorite Bible verse? I'd probably have to say Philippians 127. Excellent, excellent. You know, our young men are all so smart, and they pick out the great verses that influence your life and do great things for Let's. I'm going to change the order a little bit. Okay. The Who's your favorite teacher and uh, subject? And it doesn't have, you can have a favorite teacher, but not teach the subject that you like to? Uh, I'd probably have to say my favorite teacher was Coach Phillips, and my favorite subject is the class he teaches, and it's science. Science. Uh-oh. <laughs> Scientist, uh, mechanical engineer, electrical engineer, what are you going to be, or is it too early to decide right now? Uh, it's early, but I'd like to maybe be a doctor. That is a noble thing. I've, uh, a couple of my former players – were like you, undecided, but they had that idea. And two of them are doctors and one of them is a pharmacist right now. And uh, a great decision on it. Favorite food in the cafeteria, but yet out at the fast food or if you like uh, not fast food, because this is fast food, but it's not fast food here. What's your favorite foods at school? Uh, and I'm going to get an invite to eat lunch. Mm -hmm. I'd have to say my favorite food in the cafeteria is probably ham and cheese sliders. Miss Angie, she's a really good cook and she makes some good food. Yes, you are right. You, I, if I had a bell, I'd ring it right now. You, what about out in public? You like hamburgers, pizza? Uh, I'd have to say Mexican food, probably. Mexican there food. I, nothing wrong with that. Now, what about sports? How many do you play at Jackson Christian? So I play three sports. I play basketball, football, and soccer. Uh-oh. I'm going to give you the same question that I gave Kingston then. If the team needed you, Zach graduates after next year. Would you, if Coach Darby or Coach Bullard came to you and said, can you kick for us, would you try extra points and field goals? Definitely, <laughs> I would. I like it. Two young men that will do anything for the team that's legal, moral, or whatever. <laughs> now, we don't do the illegal <laughs> stuff. We don't leg whip people and do stuff like that with our blocking and an offensive line. Doesn't, but anyway, the great stuff like that. A favorite sports movie? Um... I don't really know. I mean, I like a lot. Maybe Woodlawn. It's just a. It's a good story. We we've, we've seen it a couple of times. It's a good. Good. You're movie. like me. I like all of them. Mm -hmm. And so, but we have one last question. Me and the coach will will finish it out with you. What's your favorite or most memorable play this year with you being an eighth grader on in the football season? Um, 
probably one of the last runs I had in the Tipton Rosemar game. It just made a lot. It was my last game, some of my last runs, so they were really fun. Did you get it on tape? Keep it. I'm yes, serious. sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Coach, it's all yours. This is this is kind of how we ended with Kingston. Uh, Hudson, you're eighth grader. Um, you're going to go play basketball um, and soccer. Uh, but but we're 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 talking football. What are you excited about um, as you move up to to varsity football? And, and what are some things you're looking forward to? Uh, well, y'all have a lot of great players that are here now, and we'll be here next year and stuff. So I'm just looking forward to hopefully contributing a little bit and going and winning the state championship. Man, that's a great answer. Do you do you have a relationship with some of those guys already? I know we're we're fortunate. Um, to be in the same building. Um, so do you have a relationship with any of our uh, varsity guys already that maybe you talk to? Yeah, I know a lot of them. I obviously played with some of them last year in middle school, but I know some upperclassmen too, and they're nice. They're cool. So what is something that, that you might be a little bit nervous about moving up? Uh, it's definitely a lot more physical. They're a lot bigger. But we'll figure that out, That's and right. we'll be good. So – Part of that is in part of your transition growing up and, and as a freshman, you'll be in the weight room. Um, are you excited about um, the weight room and, and working with Coach Herb and the speed stuff that, that we do at the varsity level? Definitely. I think that could help me and help everybody get a lot better. And He's a great, great strength and conditioning coach, and I'm excited to work with him. Absolutely. Coach? Coach, we're going we gonna to give up to Kingston just a little extra time like we did. Uh, uh, I mean, Hudson a little extra time like we did Kingston. You've got a time right now you can say anything you want to to not only the Jackson Christian fans, and there's a lot of – after I got the last attendance uh, on this, there's a lot of people listening tonight. There's other people that are not fans. He wouldn't be here if he didn't love the program. Coach Bullard wouldn't. Uh, none of us do it. We have to pay our bills but not for the money. But what do you want to say to any fan or even have a suggestion? So those, uh, believe it or not, those elementary kids, come on, some of them look up to you. What do you want to say to the public? Uh, for the football players, just keep working always because, I mean, you never know. Somebody might get hurt. You just never know what the situation is going to be and keep working and get better and never quit. Absolutely. Oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. You look like you've got one more thing you want to say. To, <laughs> oh, this is just your man's articulate. He's yep. smart. You want to say go Eagles, don't you? Yes, sir. Go Eagles. I there knew he go. wanted to say something else. We are here at Hub City Deli. They've got all kinds of food. Believe it or not, it is not too late. You've still got a few minutes to get here. Doors do close, though, and I do mean close at 8 o'clock. But if you don't get here today, uh, get here tomorrow. Try the Angry Pig, but the Beckham works good. I'm going to tell you what, you can't beat the brisket here. Now, Coach, you've had the hamburger. I get the hamburger most of the time. It's either the brisket or the hamburger, and I, I like both of them. And I did have the brisket chili tonight, though, and that, that's pretty yeah. solid as I meant well. I to ask Kingston, what did you eat tonight? I had the barbecue beef brisket. It was really oh, good. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm <laughs> jealous right now. I am jealous and envious of this, this young man. We want to thank you, Hudson, for coming and being with us tonight. And I'm proud of y'all's play, the improvement. I saw it. I only missed one of y'all's games. And I will echo what Coach Wyatt said about improvement, things like that. You keep on improving. I'll see you in a varsity uniform. Okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. Good job, Hudson. Let's, let's take one more time out here at Hub City Deli because i got to finish my cookie. <laughs> but we'll be back on the Jackson Christian's Eagle Show. Hub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's brisket hoagie with brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. We're back on the Hub City Jackson Christian Eagles show. And I'm going to tell you what, Gary just brought that back early, our great producer, because he wanted to catch <laughs> me with that cookie in my mouth, and he almost did. And uh, it is that good, and it is great for you. Food here is perfect. We appreciate all they do for us. Coach, I know on our sheet here, We've got closing remarks, but we've got some things. First of all, let's take care of the golf team. I'm yeah. going to let you handle the golf team, and I am very proud of you golf team members. Absolutely. Our boys' um, golf team, 
over fall break. Um, so it's it kind of falls at a time where you don't get as much recognition. Everybody's gone um, doing trips and things like that. But uh, they did a great job of giving us information and uh, Janet Wiley getting that out on the on Facebook and on all of our social media. Our boys golf team finished third overall um, in the Division Two A state tournament, um, and then. You got Brady Webb finished sixth overall in the state as an individual, and and those guys are are they work hard. I mean, yes. they play in the summer, uh, they practice in the summer. They they work hard, put in a lot of hours. Um, Coach Andrioni, we had him on the show. Coach Smith, we had him on the show. Um, and those are those are parents, but those are also um, some guys that push these these young guys to to be really good. And the best news about it, Brady's a senior. And we do lose a couple seniors, but you've got some really young uh, golfers there, some freshmen, some sophomores that are um, going to have this team competing to go to the state tournament. Didn't we have an eighth grader on the team this year I, yes, that sir. moved up uh, later? I believe and, so. Uh, Brady signed a scholarship to Freed, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, Brady's going to play at Freed and also Braden Riddle. Um, will join His good friend will join him there. Um, so two college golfers, and um, these guys just did a, a tremendous job representing our school. Um, Any time that, that you can make the state tournament, and I, I can't imagine. Um, I'm, I'm not a golfer by any means, and, and I've tried a couple times. It frustrates me, but watching these guys um, and how they've grown and um, excited about this team and also excited about the future for golf at Jackson Christian. Right, and we didn't have an alumni tonight or important person uh, on certain times. Uh, we came back to school yesterday. But I'm going to mention Josh Aldridge. Josh is doing a great job. He's co-defensive coordinator, and I believe he has the defensive line at Liberty University. Hugh Freeze loves him to death. And we all know Hugh from his time here in Jackson at Lambeth University, and many people follow him. And uh, we're going to try to – one night – it might not be on this show, but we're going to hook him up on a football game someplace. He comes into town. His family's still here. Yep. And – Josh is an interesting character. We did an interview with him two years ago on a show that I did till I retired from it. Now, the other one I want to mention, and we've got guys playing other places, Walker's redshirted, Walker mm-hmm. Ray, but uh, and they're not sure they can play him up to four games. But Tacker Nash has already won the Big Cat Award. It's a weekly award mm-hmm. over at um, Ro- uh, yeah, Rhodes University. I still want to call them Southwestern. That's what they were when I was in college. Right. Good friend of mine, Tommy Russell, that used to coach in this town at Northside and Lambeth. We won't mention the other schools he coached at, but uh, anyway, he's over there. And Tacker Nash, known as Tackler Nash, doing a great job over there. So there's a small alumni report, and I believe Brian Pearson, great quarterback from a few years ago, played at Lambeth. Uh, he's got a great dentistry office, but uh, he is also. He's also a board member. Matter of fact, maybe be president. He's our board, board president, yes, he sir. He is board president. Yeah. And one last one, I should have mentioned him, or he's going to shoot me. One of the elementary coaches is, um, I started calling Max Nash. Oh, my <laughs> Lord. Nathan, don't shoot me, but Max would be proud of that. If Go back a few football games, and Max was a great interview. But uh, he was a great running back. And the young man, Adam Reagan, that's record, stands a chance of getting broken this year. Uh, he was a great running back player, too, in his past. Now let's move move on back to Jackson Christian football. Got an important game. It's a region game. Yeah. And we've got a lot of stuff happening. Kids are coming back in, and I'll go ahead because Darby told y'all got as much work in as you could this week, and the kids still have a break, and that's commendable. So we, we've tried a couple different things, and as a coaching staff and anybody that has coached, you understand that trial and error is, is the only way you can learn. And we've done the whole route of, of a full week off to give them rest and, and let their bodies heal. And we just didn't come back very sharp uh, out of the break. And so that's one of your worst fears as a coach is coming off a of bye week and, you know, how you're going to perform. And, and so we found it best, and we've done it the last couple of years. And we're fortunate that our bye does land on fall break. Um, you know, our, our school does a really good job of trying to help that as much as possible. Um, when we get the schedule, but, you know, we practice three days and do a lot of individual work, do a lot of skill work, um, everybody on the team getting a ton of reps, and <clears throat> it's not as much about 
yeah, we talked FACS, but really we spent the last week trying to focus on ourselves and executing the, the little things that, that we needed to get better at. And it was a good week. And it's, more, it's a little more relaxed. You know, you, you push it back to 9 o'clock, let them sleep in a little bit, but you let them get out at 11, 11.30. And, you know, from Wednesday to Sunday, they have the, that time to still go. And we still had guys go on trips and, and things like that. And, and sports and, and diff, being on a team is a sacrifice. And would they, you know, rather be gone to the beach for, you know, that whole week? Probably so. Uh, but we had really great attendance and really great effort and energy. And it just speaks of uh, to this team and, and what they want to accomplish the rest of this year. Absolutely. Coach, before we finish up with a few comments about FACS and things, how we fared with them and stuff like that, um, there's going to be changes in our region next year. Uh, it's because of enrollment, and we can't tell you, and now Coach Bullard may, I cannot tell you the exact way they're going to draw the regions and stuff like that. going to be changes. There will be a few changes on our schedule because of that too, but change is coming for next season's schedule. Yeah, and that's something that, um, you know, we obviously pay attention to, but, you know, we have the kids we have, and we have the numbers that we have, and uh, we'll, we'll play the people that are in front of us, and, and then they put us in the same – um, region and, and same division and and it is interesting to kind of see and watch those numbers um, but you know they'll they'll put that out here in the next little while um, but yeah I think there will be a little bit of shake up there and um, I don't exactly know when they publish all that and and are going to make a decision it will come out from uh, either legislative council or board of control meeting a little later yeah and uh, they've got to get final numbers of you know there's appeals and stuff yeah people wanting to go up and down uh, they do have a schedule as far as the way the school's numbers go and bring it from top number in each, uh, like AA, AAA. Uh, the AAA uh, Division II schools are having a little trouble because Brentwood Academy could drop down to AA. But yeah. it, they usually don't, but they can. Yeah. And, and some things like that happen. Now, let's talk about FACS. Once upon a time, one of the real story programs, they're still a very good program. Uh, the coach, uh, his brother is coaching or was coaching. I got to check on that at Christian Brothers. I don't get check on. He is, as Darby said, going to give us multiple looks, multiple sets on defense and then offense. They do a lot of things, too. They'll try to confuse you and do those things. Coach, our last few years, tell them our record and what's happened in the last four meetings. So all time, and, and Coach Chase McLean does a great job getting us uh, prepped on on all this information and um, all time versus FACS we're we're five and seven, uh, but we have won the last four and one of those two of those coming last year won the regular season and first round of the playoffs and um, so you know we've had some success but you you know as well as I do that that doesn't mean anything going into Friday night um, that's why we line up and play and and they do. Uh, pose a lot of challenges. Any time that you have quarterbacks, because everybody's so used to being in the shotgun, any time that you go under center, uh, which you'll see them do quite a bit, it's hard to practice that. It's hard to replicate that because our quarterbacks and centers aren't used to it. Uh, so we've had some really good scout team reps. Um, our scout team offensive linemen jumping in there and, and learning, trying to learn the off, their offense the best that we can um, to – so that come Friday night, our defense can look and decipher and know what's coming or hope to know what's coming. And, folks, Coach just hit on something. The scout team, Red Hat crew, whatever you want to call it, uh, it has all kinds of different names. And my football coach in high school, uh, I won't mention the name. It was a funny <laughs> name, but it doesn't need to be mentioned. Well, that's Coach Riker. Do coach Riker job. does a great job with that, and, and they're his soldiers. So yeah. we, we try to call them soldiers, and uh, they, they do a, a tremendous job. Yes. Um, and we, you know, we don't, we don't even. It's not just for younger guys. We've got offensive linemen that are seniors that don't play defense that are jump in there. Oh, and they'll flip, they'll flip had, over and volunteer. Yeah, we had running back, our running backs in there today, and we, it's hard to keep those guys. They want to be on it. They don't when they get rest on defense. Jalen and Elijah and Cam and all those guys want to jump on scout team and run offense. And so, really, it, we call it scout team just for the the, the principle of it. But um, it's a tremendous you know, asset to be able to line up and have um, go a, a full scrimmage. And, and, you know, Coach, there's been a couple of years I've been here we hadn't been able to do that. That's so. right. We have it. Well, now we got full complement. Got to go back to last year. We had to whip them twice, and we did. Yeah. Second time they had figured their running game out. Pennington, uh, their running back who's back this year, had a pretty good job. 
I know we've worked on him, haven't we? Yeah, we, we, that's the first – the number one thing we have to do each and every week is stop the run. If you can stop the run, and high school quarterbacks, for the most part, you know, when, when they pass, a lot of different things can happen. Um, and so we want to force teams to, to throw the ball on us. And, and like Coach said, our defense was on the field for 71 plays um, against Tipton. And, and so we're going to give up some yards. Sure. Um, but – our number one one focus is is stopping the run, and and making them do some things they might not be as comfortable doing. Bend but don't break. That's right, Coach. Your final comments tonight? Uh, just a week off and a great week with my family, and being home on a Friday night was was good. But also missed missed our fans, missed our players, and excited to travel. Um, you know as well as I do how well our fans travel, and, and they'll be in Memphis on Friday night. Um, just excited to be back on the field and, as we say all the time, another opportunity, another opportunity for our guys to go out and, and showcase the talents and abilities that God's given them um, and, and just have a great night of football. Absolutely. You see the coaches and the players, the managers, tell them you appreciate them. Tell Greg Armour, who wears all kinds of hats, not only does he work with middle school, but he does an equal job for the high school. Go by and tell Chuck Walker. I mean, Chuck Walker. Walker. Uh, I, you I was, want, him. <laughs> I was wanting to call him uh, Wal- Walker Ray, yep. and I'm trying to break that habit of calling um, calling him that. Go by and tell him the hamburgers are the best in America, and they really are at the concession stand. Uh, we got to go on the road two times. And one of them is FACS, and I'm sure if you don't know how to get there, you can Google it. You can go – the TWSWA has a little attachment under their directory that you can hit and go there. Anybody at school will be glad to help you with directions there. And uh, sometimes in Memphis you can get lost, uh, but uh, it's this one's it's not, not a one bad of, one. No. This is not one of the bad ones. And then please be careful coming back because we'll be at TCA the week after that. And then the final – Regular season, and I want to emphasize, regular season game will be with Fayette Academy coming up to our house. Is that senior night? Yes, that night, yes sir. Senior, night. senior night. Please don't miss that. Now, for the whole crew, for Coach White, for Coach Bullard, and our head coach, Darby Palmer, the two fine young men and all the players. They did a tremendous yeah. job, Coach. Eighth Didn't graders having that kind of poise, that that was really good. Well, you get an A tonight, and maybe we can get you some credit in speech class or something <laughs> when you move up a little bit. For the administration and uh, my good friend Jason Shelton, and uh, he's a great guy. You need to meet him if you talk to him. Tell him to talk about Don Meyer a little bit, Coach Meyer, the legend. And for all the people that give you a good Christian education, Jackson Christian School, we'll tell you thanks for this your time thanks, this Gary. time. Till next time. Hub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's Brisket Hoagie with Brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian.